Praise Jesus. Welcome to this Good Friday service. Let us pray. We come before you this day, even as we remember Calvary. We recognize the sacrifice that you did for us on the cross. And today, as we remember the pain that you went through because of our sins, we pray that you will allow us through this service to love you the more, to appreciate you the more, and to dedicate ourselves to you the more, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed be our God, Almighty God. We pray that you graciously behold this family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. May we sit. Praise God, church. Praise God again. Our first reading is taken from the book of prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 52 from verse 13 to chapter 53. Isaiah 52 from verse 13 to chapter 53. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so mad beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they shall see, and that which they have not heard, they shall understand. Chapter 53. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is damp, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offering, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. This Good Friday, I request that we all stand to hear the good news of our salvation as it is written in the Gospel according to St. John, 
chapter 18, the gospel according to St. John, chapter 18, and we start to read from verse 19. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews came together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Enos then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, are you, are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it and at once the cock crawled. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was early. They themselves did not enter the praetorium so that they might not be defiled but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, if this man were not an evildoer, he would not have, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Judas, Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the Jews, but my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, so you are a king, Jesus answered. You say that I am a king, uh, Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no crime in him. But you have a custom that I should release one for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. And this is the gospel of Christ. We sit and welcome the shepherd voices.
we all stand tusimame <coughs> wapendwa wa Mungu baba yetu wa mbinguni alituma mwanawe ulimwenguni sisi kuhukumu si kuhukumu bali kwamba ulimwengu ukombolewe kutokana na nguvu za dhambi na mauti na kufanyika warithi wa uzima wa milele pamoja naye basi tuwaombe watu wote kila mahali kama yalivyo mahitaji yao tutaketi na kwa pamoja tutaomba sala ya siku kwa pamoja baba mwenye enzi ya msalabani imekwisha tupe twakusihi kwamba kwa kifo chake tupatanishwe nawe na kuishi maisha yanayo mtukuza yeye ambaye ni kichwa cha kanisa na mzaliwa wa kwanza miongoni mwa waliokufa amen tuendelee na maombi tuliombe kanisa la Kristo ulimwenguni kote kwa ajili ya umoja wake katika ushahidi na huduma kwa ajili ya maskofu wote, wachungaji, wahudumu na watu wa watumiki yao. Kwa ajili ya Wakristo wote katika jamii ya Kenya, ili Mungu alidhibitishe kanisa lake katika imani, alikuze katika upendo na kuliimarisha katika imani. Tuombe pamoja. Mwenyezi Mungu uishie milele ambaye kwa roho wako mwili wote wa watu wako waaminifu unaongozwa na kutakaswa pokea maombi na sala tunavyovileta mbele zako kwa ajili ya viungo vyote vya kanisa lako takatifu katika mwito na huduma zao wa kutumikie kwa kweli na kujitolea kwa Yesu Kristo Bwana na Mkumbu. Amen. Tutasimama kisha tutaimba pamoja wimbo huu Jesus my savior to Bethlehem led by the choir.
sit. Tuombe kwa ajili ya mataifa yote na watu wote duniani na wote waliokabidhiwa mamlaka miongoni mwao. Rais wa nchi yetu na naibu wake, bunge, mahakama na wakuu wa serikali, walinda usalama, wanajeshi na polisi, idara zote za serikali, serikali za kaunti, maridhiano na upatanisho wote wanaohudumu kwa ajili ya wema wa watu wote ili kwa msaada wa Mungu waangalie haki na kweli na kuishi kwa amani na uchaguzi wa askofu katika waaskofu wanakuru tuombe sala hiyo kwa pamoja Mwenyezi Mungu uishie mioyoni mwetu tuwakusihi upendo wa kweli wenye amani na kwa hekima yako waelekeze kwa ushauri wako viongozi wa dunia ili katika utulivu milki yao iongoze hadi duniani itakapojawa ufahamu wa upendo wako kwa Yesu Kristo bwana wetu amen Tuendelee na maombi tuombe kwa ajili ya shida zinazowakabili wanadamu wote ulimwenguni wenye njaa wasio na makao maskini na wanaoteswa wagonjwa majeruhi na walemavu wanaokabiliwa na majaribu shauku na kuvunjika mioyo wenye majonzi na kuomboleza wafungwa na waliotekwa nyara wanaozuzana na uka, kwa ukabila familia zinazozuzana na talaka ili Mungu kwa rehema zake awapumzishe na kuwatuliza na awape ufahamu wa pendo wake na kuyachochea ndani yetu utu na subira katika kuwahudumia kwenye mahitaji yao tuombe pamoja Mungu wa neema pumziko la wanaoomboleza nguvu yao watesekao kilio cha wasumbukao na wenye mahitaji kikufikie ili wakapata rehema yako katika shida zao zote utupe sisi twakusihi nguvu twakutumikia kwa hisani yake yeye aliyeteswa kwa ajili yetu mwanao Yesu Kristo bwana wetu wakati huu nitakaribisha priesti wambariki bwana
mtakatifu dhambi zangu dhambi zako dhambi zako kwa maisha ya mungu mhalifu walifanya yesu misumari wa mwili mtakatifu Thank you for that beautiful singing praise team let us appreciate them again <clears throat> Sante on behalf of the provost and the leadership of this church we wish to welcome all of us to this good friday service we also extend that warm welcome to all visitors if it's your first time to fellowship together with us kindly stand Kindly stand if it's you are a visitor, you have never been to this church before, it's your first service here. We would wish to welcome you. We all belong here. Let us give God a clap offering. <clears throat> Sunday next Sunday is combined service and it will be a holy communion service for the holy communion and also the main service we will have holy communion in both services we are also reminded and requested to pick easter gifts envelopes on your way out you will have them there and the ushers also have them they can give them out 
uh, and you can also give your Easter gift through the church pay bill. Uh, this is coming Sunday, Easter Sunday. It will be Holy Communion, and we are reminded to come also with our gifts. All cathedral men are reminded of a retreat that will happen on the 13th of April, 2024, at Pilgrim Gateway Resort. We are all to register with 700 shillings by 10th April, 2024, uh, to allow better planning. This is a retreat for all men. Kindly let us do the needful. We have notices of demise. We notify you of the passing on of brother to Winnie Machila. Winnie Machila is of Mount Lebanon Mta, and she also serves with our singing groups as the chair lady and particularly singing with the Shepherd Voices Choir. The funeral will take place this coming Monday, the 1st of April, 2024, at Shigaro Village, Undanyi, Taita, Taveta County. Let us pray with her and her family. Let us check on them and let us support them. We also notify you of the passing on of the brother-in-law of Jora Mwangai. Jora Mwangai is the secretary of Mount Seir and he also sings in the Shepherd Voices Choir. The burial date will be communicated later, uh, but the burial will be in Kiamudambi Gitie village, Kirinyaga County. Let us pray with these families and also check on them. Welcome, Provost. Uh, good morning, Church. Uh, praise the Lord. Thank you for choosing to come and worship with us during this Good Friday. It's a very, very important day for us as Christians when we remember uh, the day that our Christ was crucified on the cross uh, and I know on Sunday we shall be here just to celebrate Easter, the Sunday of Resurrection. Thank you so much for choosing to be part of this congregation. Uh, Levi Lori will be ministering to us this morning. Let us put our hands together as we welcome the word of God. Uh, meanwhile, whoever's voices, you can give us a number. We all stand, they will lead us with the hymn, Ni Ujumbe Wabwana.
Father, we thank you for the provision that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And all you ask us to do is to look up to Jesus on the cross so that we may live. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to thank God because of this morning, because of the privilege to be here again to share the word of the Lord with us, and especially on this uh, special day for which our salvation was wrought, we remember that this is the day that the Lord gave himself for our salvation, and so we thank God. As I was listening to the singing groups, the choir and the priest praised him, I could hear um, dark, solemn chords, but very beautiful, which articulated the message of Christ who died for us. I also want to thank the leadership of the church for affording me this chance to share the word of God with us. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless us. I will take us to the beginning, uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 22. That is where I have based the sermon of the day, Genesis chapter 22. And I will read. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place far, afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provi provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, so he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorns, its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, he shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time and out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed, 
All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. And this is the word of the Lord. Uh, in this scripture which we have read, uh, we are provided with the main character in this scripture as Abraham. And together with Abraham, we hear of his son, one of his sons called Isaac. And the Bible says he is the son that he loved. And the Bible shows clearly in, a, in the previous chapter, chapter 21, verse 5, that Abraham had waited for 25 years to get Isaac. I know you are wondering, today is Good Friday, why are we talking about Abraham and Isaac? Please hold your horses, we will arrive there. Now, after waiting for 25 years, Abraham is 100 years, because the promise was made when he was 75, Abraham is facing a test of faith. And here God wants to take the only son, the son of promise, according to chapter 17, verse 21. Genesis 17, verse 21, God tells Abraham to sacrifice him, who was the son of the promise. God had made a covenant with him, but God is asking him, to sacrifice the only hope, the hope for the promise that God had made to Abraham. And here we see Abraham obeying God without questioning. In fact, in verse 3 to 10 of chapter 22, we see him binding his son. Even be before binding his son to lay him on the altar, he makes him to carry the firewood that was going to be used as a burnt offering. Thank God he intervenes. God intervenes. And in verse 11 to 14, we see that God provides a ram, a ram in place of Isaac, a ram to be, to be sacrificed in the place of Isaac. And at the end of it all, we see that the story ends Joyfully because God renews his covenant because Isaac eventually has not been uh, sacrificed. Brothers and sisters, I take you to verse 1. We see that God is testing Abraham. God is testing him. Although God is not in favor of sacrifices of human beings, but God is putting him to the test. In fact, if you look at Leviticus 18.21 and also Deuteronomy 12.31, you will notice that God prohibits, he refuses the act of sacrificing human beings as it was around. But God is bringing a test to Abraham to see his faith in him. And I looked up the word test. There are two words I know which will be conflicting. Testing and temptation. There is a difference between a test and temptation. And so the word test is the measure of one's knowledge, skills, and attitudes. You only take a test so that you get a diploma. You, you, you take a test to get a degree. You take a test so that you can become a qualified driver. You take a test so that you can get unemployment. You, you take a test so that your character is checked. And Abraham was tested by God to see if he had a resolve to follow through with the covenant that he had made earlier with him. Brothers and sister, sisters, tests are supposed to measure, to see if we are measuring up with the standards that are provided. Whether we are competent, are we ready for the next level. And in the Bible, tests by God are provided to give us opportunities for us, for our own personal growth, for our own spiritual growth, 
to see if we are purified enough to move with God to the next level, to see if we are deepened enough in our relationship with God. So tests are a means of God to entrust us with greater things. And I also looked up the acronym. I was just checking if there is anybody who has ever come up with an acronym. And I realized somebody said TEST is to evaluate students' theory. To evaluate students' theory. Let me check if you have, ans uh, you have, you have gotten that. Test is to evaluate. Yes, you can have so much theory. You can know so much scripture. You can have theoretical information about certain things. But when the test comes, when you are put to the test, then we are able to evaluate that actually what you know theoretically, you are able to apply. I mentioned that there are two words here, temptation and test. God does not test us, temp tempt us, but he puts us to the test. If you look at James 1.13, I believe IT can help us with that. James 1.13, the Bible says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Temptation, brothers and sisters, is different from test. Test is trusting in God so that you can make the right choice. God gives you choices. In Deuteronomy 30, 19, he says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. God gives us choices. He gives us alternatives. But he wants us to make the, the right choice, the choice for life. Our parents in the Garden of Eden, they were provided with choices, but they chose, they took the choice of death. They took the choice that brought sin into the world. The two sons of uh, Adam and Eve, uh, that is Abel and Cain, they had the opportunity to worship God through their offertory. And when they gave their sacrifices of God, uh, sacrifices, one of them did not choose the right choice and he ended up killing uh, his brother. So I want to remind us that God is calling us to choices. When he gives us tests, he is also giving us choices to make the choices that will add value the choices that will make us become better Christians, the choices that mo will move us to the next level. And Mount Moriah is mentioned in this scripture and also in 2 Corinthians Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. This is where God appeared to David at the threshing floor in one of the men called Onan who was a Jebusite. And Mo Mount Moriah is a place where Solomon built the temple. Can I see by a show of hand? Did you know that Mount Moriah is where the temple was built? That's an honest answer. I've seen somebody shake their heads like this. Uh, the other day I was asking Mount Carmel, what is the meaning of Mount Carmel? And people had to do some assignment. I also visited with another mta called Horeb. And I asked them, what does Horeb mean? And people looked up. Please, find what is the meaning of some of these words. And so Mount Moriah is where the temple was built by Solomon. And so brothers and sisters, uh, the son whom God had made promises, he wanted a, a descendants, great descendants to come out of him is the one that is about to be crucified, uh, to be sacrificed. That is Isaac. It is ridiculous. It is surprising. It is even absurdity to imagine that the only one son that was being waited for, the one who was supposed to come and bring uh, the, the lineage of Abraham for all the world to be blessed, is the one who is about to be sacrificed. All this while I notice 
that Abraham did not divulge his personal conversation between him and, his, and God. He did not divulge this information to his servants. He did not even share with his wife Sarah. Probably, probably they would have talked him out of it. They would have shown him that this is not God speaking. How can God have uh, waited all these years to just give you the son and tell you to sacrifice the son? And so the Bible says three days. Can you say three days? They traveled for a journey of three days. And three days is very significant in our lives as Christians. It is three days when Jesus was crucified on Friday. He arose after, the three, after three days. Three days is important in our faith. They took a journey of three days according to verse 4 of chapter 22. And it is in verse 5 that we realize that even though the three days were to elapse, the sun was going to come back. Just as, just as later in the Gospels, we realize that Jesus, after three days, was not going to stay in the grave, but he was going to bring our, uh, our victory. So they traveled for three days. They went up the hill, and Abraham was in the process of sacrificing his only son. And when I was reading this, it looked like a horror movie for me. Imagine yourself, you don't know that you are going to be crucified, uh, sacrificed. You are the one carrying the firewood that is going to be used to burn you up. And you ask your father, Father, yes, I have firewood, but where is the lamb? And the father says, the Lord will provide. Can you say Jehovah Jireh? The Lord will provide is the same as Jehovah Jireh. God will see. God will provide. Brother Isaac was unaware that he was participating in the process of his own sacrifice. He was carrying the firewood. His hands then were bound. We do not see in the scripture that I just read any situation that shows he fought back. He did not struggle with his father. The fact that he was able to carry firewood means if he had to fight, he would have even taken off. But Isaac gave himself him. He did not struggle. He gave himself he gave himself. And this reminds me that this was the forerunner of what Jesus did. He gave himself. The Bible says in, the, uh, in heaven when God needed to send somebody, Jesus provided himself. He gave himself. It was in, in his own volition. And he gave himself to die on the cross for us. But uh, Praise the Lord. In verse 13 and 14, we realize that God provides a substitute for Isaac. Can you say substitute? I remember another time in this, uh, in this uh, pulpit, somebody was preaching and they gave us a word called vicarious substitution. Vicarious substitution, I looked up, is, is a, at, um, a law term. It's a, it's a legal term that means Taking responsibility. It's a principle of taking responsibility for another person's action. I also realize the term is being used in science. It, uh, it is called vicarious nucleophilic substitutions. Substitution. How many chemis chemists are in this place? Banais was a few. Wale walisoma chemistry vizuri. Vicarious nucleophilic substitution. It is a special type of nucleophilic aromatic replacement of hydrogen atoms to aromatic ring. But let me bring you to the Bible. Jesus is being provided as vicarious atonement. He died in my place. I was supposed to die and the uh, praise team sang very well. He was, I was supposed to die but he died in my place. It is called vicarious atonement. He sacrificed himself for you. 
He sacrificed him, himself for me. Are you willing to give God everything? God gave, him, gave up his only son to die on the cross for you and I. Are you willing to completely trust in God? God gave his son to die for you. Are you willing to push your faith to the limits so that like Abraham who trusted God to the point of stabbing his own son, slaying his own son, he trusted in God. Brothers and sisters, the story of Abraham illustrates the story of God uh, in his redemption and salvation. The way God wanted to save mankind. We are just 22 chapters away from first uh, the first chapter of Genesis and we realize that God starts the process of redeeming man, the process of saving man and so Abraham believed in God and the Bible says it was counted to him righteousness and the Bible says through him that all men uh, uh, the, uh, he became the father of faith and that all men shall be blessed let me give us three lessons out of this, and I believe God will bless us. Number one, the sacrifice of Isaac was a foreshadow of Jesus' sacrifice. The sacrifice of Isaac was a foreshadow of Jesus' sacrifice. We see that God, in that process of allowing Abraham to come to the point of slaying his son, he provided an alternative there was a ram that was stuck, its horn was stuck in the bush, in the thicket. And so the, the ram had to take the place of Isaac. We can say in biblical terms or in theological terms, the ram atoned for Isaac. And so brothers and sisters, the atonement or ransom is to redeem or to buy back that which was initially the owners. It is offering a substitute in place of someone. Jesus was sacrificed for our sins once and for all when he offered himself on the cross. Can you give us Hebrews 7.27? Hebrews 7.27 clearly shows that Jesus was sacrificed for our sin once and for all. Hebrews 7.27 It just simply shows that all our sins, the sins of the world were put in that one man. You can imagine what kind of sins that you can imagine. The worst, the one that you can never look at. If you were to look at this type of sin, you would look away. The Bible says in Hebrews 7.27 that uh, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people for this he did once for all when he offered himself up you know the, the, the priests were themselves sinners and so when they were offering sacrifice they had to sacrifice for themselves first then sacrifice for others but this Hebrews shows us that Jesus himself did not even need to, sacri uh, to, to offer sacrifice for himself, but he sacrificed, sacrificed once and for all. Number two, like Isaac, Jesus was the son that willingly laid down his life for his father. Like Isaac, Jesus was the son that willingly laid down his life for his father. And I was just thinking, probably... I do not want to be heretical in this. But I was thinking, if God was attempting to save the world through Isaac, are you together with me? If God was attempting to save the world through Isaac, and the, the people, the pagan people of the world were sacrificing their own children, would there be a difference between God and the God of the world? No, there wouldn't. Because God prohibits the sacrifices of people. In the scriptures that I, I just showed you earlier, Deuteronomy and the other one, is that people around Israel were offering their own children to their gods. But God is tempting Abraham here if he could have sacrificed his own son. 
But praise God. God is a perfect God. There is no way God would have made that kind of a mistake by allowing Abraham to sacrifice his own son. And instead, he offered an alternative. And this clearly shows us, and sometimes people struggle with the fact that Jesus died in our place. I saw somewhere in the West someone saying that Jesus died for his own sins. They refuse to agree that Jesus died for you and I. That we could not in our own human nature, we could not reach God. We could not pay for our own sins. But God provided a way out. And that is Jesus. He offered the alternative. You know, God had always wanted to redeem mankind. Since that effect of the fall, he wanted man to come back to him. Therefore, he provided the sacrifices of the animals as a way of uh, uh, atoning for man. Yet this could not erase sin in man. But God, God provided Jesus. God provided Jesus. Hebrews 10, 5 says, Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. That is to say, people continue to sacrifice, but as they continue to sacrifice, that one was not enough to wipe away the sins. And so Jesus says, the body that you have given me, this body that you have provided for me, is the one, the one that you've prepared for me, is the one that will give the final uh, atonement for the sins of the world. Number three, and the final one. The redemption of God's people is a costly sacrifice. Can you say that? The redemption... The, the redemption of God's people is a costly sacrifice. Let's repeat that. <coughs> By God providing a ram instead, we see a picture of Jesus rising from the dead. We see Abraham climbing the mountain, Mount Moriah, for three days. And in the process, he came with an answer. God provided an alternative, which was the ram. And therefore, this signif signifies that Jesus, uh, who died on this particular day on Friday, is not one who was going to die completely, but he was going to rise. Yes, it's not all gloom. It is not hopeless. But out of this, God has provided an alternative. God was willing to sacrifice his own son so that you may depart from your sins. God was willing to give up his only son so that that which holds you captive, is it the sin of immorality? Is it the sin of being hasty in, in committing uh, sinfulness? Is it a dysfunctional relationship, husband and wife who are not agreeing? Is it about idol worship? What is that that is holding you captive? Is it materialism? Brothers and sisters, God provided Jesus who was a willing sacrifice so that you may depart from your sinfulness. And he wants you and I to lay all our burdens on the altar. Like Abraham, the Lord provided Jesus as the sacrifice. What are you giving up today? What are you giving up so that you may live a life of holiness? What are you willing to give up so that you will start the relationship with the Lord? The Lord provided salvation through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you accept him today? Will you invite him in your heart so that you start your relationship with him? Brothers and sisters, let this weekend where we commemorate the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ and the founding of our faith, let it not pass by without you making a decision to follow Christ. You don't have to continue in your life of sin. You don't have to be defeated. You don't have to continue to be seen as a person who is defeated in your walk with Christ. But God has provided an alternative. He has provided a vicarious atonement. He has provided a way out. He has provided the ram 
who was willing to give his life for you. Are you going to make that commitment to follow Christ? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We have shared your word that you have seen and you have provided the alternative. The alternative is Jesus Christ. And you are calling us to walk with you by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. Thank you even for the viewers who are watching us online. We pray for them, Lord. May your word come so powerfully and convict the hearts of men that men may turn to you. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. stand and be ready to give our offertory and love offering this Good Friday service. The choir will lead us with the offertory hymn down at the cross.
all things come from you, O Lord. Glory to your name. You have given us everything that we have, and we also belong to you. Sanctify these gifts that we have, been, we have given so that they can be used for your service and bless the work of our hands through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Tutaendelea kusimama na tutaweza kusema imani ya mitume pamoja. Tuasimama na muamini Mungu, Baba Mwenyezi, Mungu wa mbingu na nchi na Yesu Kristo, Mwana wake wa pekee. Amen. Tumechukuliwa mimba kwa mwanzo wa Mtakatifu. Akateso wakati wa utawala wa Pontio Pilato akasurubiwa kafa akazikwa akashuka kwa wafu siku ya tatu akafuka kutoka kaburini akapaa kwenda mbinguni sasa ameketi mkono wa kuma akaokuwa atakuja tena kwa hukumu watu walio hai na waliokufa mtakatifu mtakatifu shirika watakatifu tutarejea kwa taratibu zetu kwa the pamphlets that we have je tungelikuepo yani hiyo ni kutuliza kama tungekuepo siku ya Yesu kusulubiwa tungelikuwa wayahudi je Tungalimtetea dhidi ya mashtaka ya dhihaka yaliyotolewa na makuhani Swali la pili Je kama tungelikuepo tungalikuwa wa Yunani tungemtetea tungemtetea Warumi walipomhukumu kufa Na je kama tungelikuweko Tungalikuwa wanafunzi waliokuwa naye je tungekaa naye umati ulipogeuka na kuwa wa kum, wa kusanyiko, mkusanyiko wa wasulubishaji au tungelikuwa kama Petro aliyemfuata akampenda na hata akamkana mara tatu kabla ya alfajiri katika kufa amezichukua dhambi zetu katika upendo atusamehe makosa yetu katika kufufuka atupa ahadi ya kukubalika hakikisho la msamaha na thibitisho la uzima wa milele umesamehewa dhambi zako asema bwana Nenda lakini usitende dhambi tena. Sisi wote pamoja tuombe hilo ombi pamoja katika pendo lako ifanyika mzima kwa kifo chako pata tumaini jipya. Unga o yangu, mkombozi na tumaini langu, nimesamehewa dhambi zangu. Haleluya. Tunaweza kuketi. Tuombe wote ambao hawajapokea injiri ya Kristo kwamba Mungu ataifungua mioyo yao wajue ukweli na awape imani na utii tuombe pamoja Mungu wa rehema mumbo wa watu wote na mpenda roho zetu warehemu wote wasio kujua kwa jinsi unavyojidhihirisha katika Kristo Yesu mwanao ifanye injiri yako kuhubiriwa Wanaema na nguvu kwa wao ambao hawajaisikia geuza roho zao wanaoikataa marudisha zizini waliopotea ili kuwe na kundi moja chini ya mchungaji mmoja Yesu Kristo Tujitoeni kwake Mungu wetu na tuombe neema ya maisha matakatifu pamoja na walioaga dunia katika imani ya Kristo na wale ambao imani yao inajulikana kwake Mungu pekee tuhesabiwe 
tuhesabiwe wafao kuingia kwenye utimilifu wa furaha ya Bwana wetu kisha tuipokee taji ya uzima siku ya kufufuliwa tuombe pamoja e, Mungu mwenye nguvu zizobadilika na nuru ya milele tazame Yajabu, mtakatifu na kwa nguvu na msaada wako tuelekeze kwa upole katika mpango wako na wokovu ufanye ulimwengu wote kupata kuona na kutambua kuwa vitu vilivyo dhararishwa sasa vitakwezwa na vile vilivyo chakaa vinafanywa vipya na kwamba vitu vyote vinafanywa vikamilifu na yeye ambaye kwake vitu vyote viliumbwa manao Yesu Kristo bwana wetu yeye aishie na kumiliki pamoja nawe katika umoja wa roho mtakatifu Mungu mmoja milele na milele amina tusibabe Tuajivunia msalaba wako e Bwana na kutukuza ufufu wako mtakatifu kwa ajili ya msalaba fulani mejarudi Mungu turehemu tuangazie nuru ya uso wako na uje kwetu je zako zijulikane juu ya ukovu wako katika Pokea sifa za watu wako e Mungu Tuajivunia msalaba wako e Bwana tukiusifu na kuutukosa ufufuo wako mtakatifu kwani kwa njia ya msalaba furaha imejaa dunia yote. E mokozi wa ulimwengu ambaye kwa msalaba na damu ya dhamani umetukomboa. Mwenyezi Mungu uishie milele katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Tuwashukuru sana kwa sababu umekuwa pamoja nasi. Tangu tulipoanza wakati wa saumu, tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya wengi ambao wameweza kuwa wakija hapa kanisani zaidi siku ya Jumatano kwa sababu ya maombi. Wengine wameweza kuomba wakiwa kazini. Wengine wameweza kuomba wakiwa katika nyumbani kwao na hata katika maofisi yao. Kuna wale ambao wamejinyima chakula na Mungu wetu kuna wale ambao pia walikuwa wanatutumia vazi ambazo tulikuwa tunasoma kila siku. Na shukuru sana kwa sababu ya safari hiyo. Na siku ya leo tumekuja hapa kama ni siku ya ukumbusho vile Yesu ulivyo angikwa msalabani kwa ukombozi wetu neno lako likatufuza vizuri sana ya kwamba wewe ulikuwa mwana wa pekee kama vile Isaka alivyokuwa mwana wa pekee na ya kwamba yeye kwa hiari yake aliweza kujitoa na kuna mambo ambayo ni ya muhimu sana ya kwamba lazima damu ingemwagika na ili ukombozi wa ulimwengu ukaweza kupatikana na ni damu ambayo ni ya gharama sana. Asanti Yesu kwa sababu ya kujitoa kwa ajili yetu. Asanti kwa kutukomboa. Asanti kwa kutuletea wokovu wa buri. Maisha yetu Mungu wetu yameweza kubadilika kwa sababu ya kuwa na tumaini na kukutegemea we na kukuamini. Na hata wakati huu tunapoendelea kutafakali juu ya neno lako na yale ambayo uliweza kufanya msalabani kwa ukombozi wetu utusaidie sana kuepusha kujiepusha na mafundisho mabaya na mapotovu ambayo wakati mwingi tumeona katika nchi yetu na hata nje ya nchi yetu na wengi ambao wanasema ya kwamba Yesu hakufa na hakufufuka na wengine ambao wanataka kuturudisha katika mambo ambayo yalikuwa ni ya kale lakini wewe unasema ya kwamba uliweza kutoa kadhaa kafara ambayo ilikuwa moja na timilifu na ya kutosha kwa ulimwengu wote utusaidie kujua ya kwamba hakuna kafara nyingine ambayo tunaweza kutoa ijapokuwa tu ile Yesu wewe uliweza kutoa 
Tusaidie katika imani yetu kumtazama Yesu ambaye ni mwazilishi na mkamilishi wa imani yetu. Na sasa tunapoelekea katika nyumba zetu na kwenda katika kazi zetu na kupumzika na mambo mengine yote. Tuomba ya kwamba ukaweza kututangulia na nguvu zako uwe mchungaji wetu tuondolee giza kwenye mapito yetu na tunaomba ya kwamba amani ya Mungu inayopita fahamu zote iendelee kutulinda sisi tuendelee kumjua na kumpenda Mungu na huyu Yesu Kristo ambaye aliweza kuangikwa kwa msalabani kwa ukombozi wetu nayo baraka ya Mungu mmoja enzi baba mwana na roho mtakatifu iwe naji ikae naji sasa na hata milele wimbo wa kutoka damu imebubujika <tos>